half-life. Half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of a radioactive isotope sample to decay. And a special emphasis there on time. Okay, so it's an amount of time. And we can determine it two different ways. One is using graphical analysis and looking at a graph that takes a look at the data. And the other is through calculation of data. And so we're going to take a look at both of those in this video today. The first one is graphical analysis. And so in this example, we actually have carbon-14. Um, and this is the percent. It's really nice if these start with 100%, well, starts with 100%. If we have relative numbers, we can start with 100 as well. And that always makes our graphs really nice. And then along the bottom, we have time in years. Okay, so this is a running time. This is not a half-life time. So we have to determine what the half-life time is. And so if we take a look at this, if we start with 100, the amount of time it takes for half the sample to decay, that means that we would only have 50 left, would be our first half-life. And so this spot right here is going to be our first half-life. And so this is our first half-life. Okay. And the amount of time it took was 5,700 years. And you'll notice that each one of these is 5,700 years. And so our half-life time is 5,700 years. Now, this is when we would have one half of our sample remaining. Okay. And so the next half-life would occur then when we cut this 50 in half. And so that would be at 25. So here's our 25. And so we go across and we're going to run into this data point here and then down. And that's how much time it would take total time. Again, it's another 5,700 years. And at this point, we would be at one quarter of our original sample that we started with because 25 divided by 100 would give us a quarter or 25%. The next one, if we take a look at one more half-life, so that was the second half-life, so that would be second half-life. So if we take a look at half of 25, so it's around 12.5, it's right around here, 12.5, and we go over. Again, another 5,700 years has gone by. Now at this point, we're at 1 eighth of what we originally had, and so on and so forth. So, so there's a lot that we can do by looking at the graph that's an exponential decline or decay of that sample. The other thing that we can do is we can actually take a look directly at some data. So this is the same thing, it's carbon-14. So carbon-14 has that half-life of 5,700 years we just talked about. How many half-lives, so we want to know the number of half-lives, have passed after this total amount of time? Okay, so this would have been the time we would see on the bottom of the graph if we wanted to know this. And so let's go ahead and do this. We're going to start off by determining the number of half-lives. So n, which is exactly what it's asking us to do, n is the number of half-lives. Okay. And we determine that by taking total time okay that's this number and we're going to divide that by our half lifetime. dot my eye there. Okay, so let's plug those numbers in. So we're going to have 28,500 and we're going to divide that by 5,700. All right, let's see if I can, oops, I'm going to bring up my calculator here so we can do that. Okay, there's my numbers, sorry. I lost them there for a minute. So 
28,500 divided by 5,700, and that gives me a value of five. So that gives me five, so that means five half-lives have passed. Most of these problems, you will actually have to determine the number of half-lives first before you can do other things. And so we're going to look at that on the next example. And this one, it's asking us for the fraction, what fraction remains? Okay, so the fraction remaining. And again, it's still carbon-14, but now we have a new amount of total time. Okay, so here's our total time. So the first thing we want to do is determine n. So n equals 34,200. We're going to divide that by 5,700. Okay, so 34,200 divided by 5,700. And we get a value of 6, 6 half-lives. Now, to determine the fraction remaining, we do 1 over 2 to the nth power. So 1 over 2, and n was 6, so to the 6th power. And when we do that, I'm just going to go 2 to the 6th, which should give us 64. Perfect, it does. And so I'm going to keep this in the fraction um, as a fraction because it's asking for the fraction. So that's going to be oops, 1 64th. Okay, that is our fraction remaining. All right, the last type of problem that we generally tend to see with this is one where it's asking us for the amount of mass or the amount of sample that remains. And this is actually the same as the last situation where we have um, 30, 34,200 years. So we already did n equaled 6, right? We already had that from the last example. So now, in order to do the sample that remains, okay, which is an amount, so sometimes you'll see amount, sometimes you'll see mass, the sample remaining, I'm going to shorthand that, is going to be equal to the original mass, okay, so original mass, which is 125 grams, divided by 2 to the nth power. Okay, so let's plug in our values here. So 125 grams is going to go on the top. We're going to divide that by 2 to the nth power. The nth power was 6. So we already know that 2 to the 6th was 64. So now all we have to do is go 125 divided by 64 and we get 1.95, there's a whole bunch of numbers. We'll talk later on about how we round our numbers in chemistry, it's really important to do that properly. But for right now, I'm gonna round this to 1.95 grams. And that is the amount of sample that remains of this carbon-14 um, sample after 34,200 years, which is a really long time. And that's a little bit about how we determine half-life and sample remaining. 